Well, that music means it's the start of our sports event, and this particular event is the Litter Media Game of the Week preview show. On this Thursday, those of you listening to it on a Friday, uh, we've got the game coming up tonight in that respect. But for those watching live, it's tomorrow night, weather permitting. Yes. And that's and this has not been a problem this year. So far. Until <laughs> now. So uh, we are expecting weather, uh, but I'm sure the schools will do what they can to clear the pathway so that we can get there for the broadcast. And there's always a possibility that if it's not Friday, it may be Saturday. That yeah. is a possibility, too. Yeah. So, And, of course, you want to keep it right here. We'll let you know. Uh, either way. Uh, coming up in this hour, we will have a uh, talk with Ty Park, who mm-hmm. is with Neil Coleman Insurance and Wyandotte Mutual Insurance. Of course, we have our Player of the Week to announce. But uh, this weekend, we will be uh, – announcing who the player of the year for 2023 is. So uh, grateful for our uh, recipient to be able to be with us to do that. It's going to be on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So we'll uh, we'll have all that for you this weekend. All right. So we also have waiting in the wings for the first time. In the green room. (laughs) A coach live and in person. Yeah. Uh, Check his pulse. Make sure he's ready to go. Uh, We'll talk with Coach Gary Kello coming up in just a moment and Kyle Joseph from the Westfall Mustangs. That's all just ahead as well. Uh, We're getting that point in the season where some of the conferences are halfway through. Uh, Some of them are already decided in girls basketball. Uh, So we've got a lot of things to share today. Yeah. A lot coming up and uh, we hope that you'll be with us. Uh, If you haven't been with us in previous weeks. We've been doing this since football season. So. Yes. Yeah. And you can go back and see previous shows on our videos page of our YouTube channel and uh, also on our Facebook page here as well. All right. Coming up in just a moment, we'll have Coach Gary Kello slide into the studio for us. And that's coming up next on the Litter Media Game of the Week preview show. At Country Clipper, pride runs deep. We take pride in knowing our mowers help create a space for families to make memories. That our features transform mowing into an enjoyable experience. Most importantly, we take pride in knowing the decision to purchase a Country Clipper will be one you can be proud of for years to come. Country Clipper Zero Turn Mowers. Wherever you are, you're there for a reason. You shouldn't have to make a trip to the branch just to deposit a check. Skip the trip and use our mobile app to easily and securely deposit checks from your phone. Day or night, wherever you are, or whatever you're doing, download the Kingston National Bank mobility app today. At Rathcamp Financial, we act as your advocate in all wealth matters. We believe in long-term relationships and working to earn your continued trust with our customized investment solutions. Our greatest satisfaction comes from working with clients for many years and helping them realize their dreams. We're back here on the Litter Media Game of the Week pregame show. Of course, Zane Trace at West Falls, the scheduled game for Friday night. And this guy live in the studio with us, uh, Gary Kello, legendary coach Gary Kello. He just picked up career win 550 here uh, about a week back. But uh, congratulations, coach. I appreciate you guys. You know, it's a. Uh, Somebody asked me the other day, I said, yeah, Mike and Dan, uh, you got to thank them because they've been with me throughout my career and uh, as broadcasters and friends. So I'm just happy to be here. Gary was my JV coach uh, my junior year, uh, got blood poisoning in my leg twice that year and gave up basketball for my mm-hmm. senior year. I don't, I'm not blaming you, coach. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, I know you are. That life happens. But uh, let's talk about this year's team. Uh, you're 6-0, and the only unbeaten boys basketball team in the SVC but we were talking before we went on the air six and six overall because your non-conference schedule number one has been a killer but you've also had some injury problems yeah you know we've had like a lot of adversity this year uh 
we've had two of our starters out. The, our point guard, Landon Gerald, has been out since the Dina game when he got hurt at the end of the game. And then Langley, our starting center, has been out. But, yeah, our non-league schedule has been kind of brutal. But, you know, it's really made us a lot better because our kids, we've played some more young kids. Uh, you know, you can tell we're coming along. Uh, the other night we took Willersburg, really should have had them and then went overtime. And, you know, our, our non-league schedule is, prepares us for what? we really shoot for and that's the end of the year and it's made some of our younger kids a lot better by getting playing time and made us deeper so hopefully this week we'll we'll have uh landon back lj back this week and then uh, langley in a week or so and i think we'll be pretty good again when we get everybody back in force but we've gotten better in the last three weeks just kids starting to fill in roles and getting our cohesiveness back again league champs uh, last four out of five years so what's What's the makeup of this team compared to some of those championship teams in recent years? Uh, this team reminds me of my teams in the 80s and 90s. We were smaller, more athletic, quicker. We play a different style. We had to make that change last year. We, last couple of years, we were more of a power basketball team. Everything down and around with asking down inside. This year, more and more, we spread you out and use your athleticism. And we've become a pressing team again, which is I have more fun with those kind of teams than the power teams, but we're, we're a completely different type of team. We just had to reshape the way we are. And like I said, it hurt us in some of these non-league games here in the last because we had to adjust again by playing two posts instead of one early in the year. But we're getting back there, and, and uh, I think uh, this team's fun to watch when we're at 100%. Hopefully we get that before tournaments. Uh, of course, Gary Kello has always been a defensive uh, guy. He likes that, uh, you know, get in your face type of defense. Uh, as far as spreading the floor on offense, do you feel that you've got people that can put up the three on the perimeter, or is it just take the best shot you can? Uh, you know, I watch some of the teams run all these new spread offenses and stuff like that. We, we run that wider stuff mm -hmm. with more open gaps and stuff and spread the floor out, but our number one goal still is to get it inside, and, and it don't matter who it is, but you have to have the kind of team we've got this year because when we were at full strength, we got five guys can shoot it outside. And, you know, you could see that coming last year when we played the three young guards with our two seniors or three seniors at times. And uh, this, you have to have the right kind of team to play the way we are, and uh, you, don't, you really don't want to leave anybody open. But we, we're more open. If, if you're open, we shoot to three a lot more now. Mm -hmm. And that's just the style of basketball everybody plays right now. But we're still post-oriented. We still try to go inside first before things happen outside. So uh, we're kind of a fun team to watch when we're at full strength. The game Friday, scheduled game Friday with Westville, completes the first round of conference play. Your opponent... They started the year overall 6-0, and oh, but they've dropped five of their last seven. They lost their second leading score uh, mm -hmm. on the team for the rest of the year. It was a transfer uh, situation that he couldn't play the second half of the season. So they're losing about 19 points a game mm -hmm. by losing that young man. Yeah, and I know, I know what they're going through because, you know, uh, LJ was an 18, 19-plus yeah. point guard for us and, and then the Langley 10. So we're, I know what they're going through. It's going to take them a while to make the adjustment. Uh, sometimes your schedule determines how you start out in the season, too, who you play first, who you play second in the rounds, and that, those sort of things. So, you know, sometimes records can be deceiving. I think when people look at us at the end of the year, you know, we might be close to 500, but I surely don't think people want to play us because uh, might be a 500 team, but half of our losses are against really good Division II schools. But sometimes your schedule has to play into that. And, boy, when you lose your second leading scorer, first leading scorer, that really has a big effect on you. I know Coach will make adjustments and, and get it together, and they'll start rolling again. So Westfall's got good talent this year. You know, the Clark kid shoots it really well and is aggressive. Uh, Barnes is a nice, experienced player inside. they got the other big kid, Layton. And so, they, you know, they're a balanced team. They're a good team, and, you know, it's like used to be when we were at the pit and then Little oh, Jim, yeah. we, it was a factor, <laughs> but no matter what kind of team, and playing, playing in the Dome is a different factor, too. As we said, we're just halfway through the season, but with the new RPI ratings that will determine seeds instead of the coaches voting, it's affecting, you know, where you show up. And now they only had week one out. Week two will be coming up on where you show up. But I think you were like 15th in the Southeast District. Mm -hmm. But yet you're undefeated in your conference. Right. Which is I, usually I think, a pretty tough league. I think the RPI, there's tweaks that still have to be made in it. And they said one of the factors is even in a loss, your competition is going to be factored into that. I don't think that tweak has been made yet. And, and you look at us. I guarantee there may be only one of the OVC or two of the OVC teams down there have a non-schedule like ours. Mm -hmm. And 
I think they'll look at that before the season's over, who we have played. And, you know, you, you add up the six losses we've had, the teams that we played probably only have six or seven losses. Yeah. And so you're talking about 50 and seven or eight or nine. But, you know, whether it's factored in, it really don't matter because all the games are going to be at Waverly and uh, Jackson this year. So mm-hmm. the home court advantage at first round game is not going to mean anything. It might mean we might have to play a higher seed. But I think as the season goes on right here at the end, you're going to see that uh, it'll balance out for us. You know, really, you look – we pick off any of those games, but see, injuries really has made a factor in some of those non-league games that we've lost by one or two points uh, to really good teams. You know, you win those, and we're in the top five or six. Right. And that's why I think the first uh, ranking come out, we were like 15th or 16th, something like that. But that really don't bother us. All, all we know is how we would be prepare, prepared. You know, we want to get back to districts, and if you play a week schedule – and you get back to the districts, you're going to get drilled. But I think with our schedule, we get if we can get back to the districts, it's a different deal then. Gary, lastly, uh, you know when you look at that six and six, but again you're six and zero. Oh, what's the confidence level of your team right now? When of course they hear all the the media and they look at the record and all that, but where's your confidence level on the team right now? Really good. I mean, really good. You know, we took Willersburg to the overtime the other night and had them beat. And we make one more foul shot here or there, we win the game before in regulation. So, you know, they're, what, second or third in the region. Yeah. So it, it, our, our confidence is really high. Our, our kids, I guess that's my stupid mindset, but regular season, because we've had so much success, we expect to win. Our, our kids expect we're going to be really good here at the end of the year because our goals, you know, you got to pick up some of these other things as a long way, but our goal is how we finish the season. And I, I hate to say that because league is super important to kids and it's important to these kids. And, uh, but they know, they know the direction of the way we, we, we go. They know how we are. But right now we're on a high right now. LJ is going to be coming back at our point. You know, you're talking about getting 19, 20 points back. Mm-hmm. We go back to our – you're talking about the spread offense. We go back where we can beat you off the dribble. And he's going to get to the rim. He's going to make different things happen. So, right now, we're really excited. Our, our kids, believe it or not, even with uh, Carter Langley in there doing conditioning and yeah. stuff with his broken hand, the other night was uh, – I think Monday was the first time we've had all 14 of our varsity wow. kids in practice the whole season because we came out of the f- uh, football season with uh, – Colin Larson with a broken thumb. We got him back a week and a half ago. Uh, Grady Stewart was coming in with a broken ankle. We got him back after Christmas. So this is the first time. The other night we had everybody in the building at the same time during one of our practices. So we're excited right now. Our kids, you know, we know we can win. You don't go to Miami Trace and play them tough, short two players. You don't play Jackson tough. And, you know, you, people like that, you don't do that and not have confidence. And our kids have great confidence right now, and they know where we're heading and what we want to do. Well, uh, you've been around long enough to know that mm-hmm. in athletics, especially basketball with flu, injuries, you got to have depth. And even with those kids out, you said earlier, it's making some of these other guys have to step up. Oh, uh, we've had, we've had uh, Gunnar McCullough, our uh, 6'3 sophomore. He's averaging like 15 a game since he started the last four games, five games. And then you've got uh, uh, Noah Houston's come in. He's had a 20-point game, 10-point game. So now instead of us having five, six guys, now we've got nine. And, uh, I mean, that, that makes a big difference as you head towards the end because we will go back with our style now. We had to kind of back down a little bit with our pressure. Now we'll step our pressure back up here at the end of the year and play those eight or nine kids and just keep running kids in there doing things. And they're varsity players. They're not, you know, just guys that's bringing in. But, you know, I, I'm excited about this group of kids, too, for the next year or two because, uh, you know, other than my grandson, Brock Jarrell, and, and Carter Langley, that's our only seniors. Wow. And everybody's – I hear people around that we play, oh, we're young, we're young, we're young. And I just sit back and kind of <laughs> – you guys you guys don't get it. We're real, we're real young. we got four sophomores and five juniors that can play that are going to be coming back. So we're excited. Our, our kids are – that's the way we are. Um, we have one rule in our locker room. We don't look back. We look at where we are and what we're heading toward, and, and the kids believe that. Gary, always good catching up with you. Looking forward to seeing your team against the Mustangs. I appreciate you guys. Gary Keller of the Zane Trace Pioneers back with more of our Litter Media pregame show coming up. Find a career you love with Pickaway Ross Adult Education. Skilled trades careers are in high demand with no signs of slowing down. Pickaway Ross offers career training programs with expert instructors and hands-on learning tactics to create a variety of opportunities. Visit our website for more information. I was looking for a first job. Um, I had been babysitting and decided it was something for a little more permanent. It pays very well. 
It's convenient, you can make your own schedule with the flexibility, that's something that I like. The people that I work with are great. I wouldn't ask for a better crew or management team to work for. This is Andy Tomlinson. When insuring what's important to you, our agents are there when you need us the most. Tomlinson Insurance, for the best coverage at the best cost. Visit us online at tomlinsonins.com to learn more. You haven't had vodka soda like this. No one has. Made with the world's smoothest vodka plus real juice. New White Claw Vodka Soda. We're joined on the pregame show by Kyle Joseph, head coach of the Westfall Mustangs, of course, who are featured in our Litter Media Radio Game of the Week Friday night as the Mustangs host the Zane Trace Pioneers. Kyle, a, a great start this year, 6-0, and but unfortunately you've lost five of the last seven. So talk about those first six games and what has happened since that time. Yeah, I, I think I've been telling people going back to, I forget the exact date, but when we had Paint Valley at home, I think December 13th, somewhere around there. So, you know, over the next month, you know, going from there, we played nine games and we had eight practices. Um, and I think even, and, you know, that's something that a lot of teams deal with. Um, and on top of that, you know, we had multiple guys out with sickness here and there. So I think over that next month from there forward, you know, we probably only had, you know, one or two practices where we had everyone there that, you know, that, that plays for us, um, which is, you know, it, it's hard to hard to get better. You're just trying to, you know, get, get ready for that next game. You don't have a lot of time to work on stuff. Um, so here really in, you know, the three days leading up to Dean last week and four days here um, before Zane Trace, we were practicing as much in the last week as what we did in the month before that. Um, so, you know, I, I, you know, obviously we got off to a good start, um, but, you know, played, played some tough teams um, and, and lost a couple overtime games in, in that stretch here. Um, and then, you know, we're, we're dealing with a kind of unique situation for me and for everyone, you know, where, uh, you know, with, with Joe Ray, you, you lose someone you know, halfway through the year who's, um, who's playing 30 minutes a game and averaging about 20 points per game. So, um, I, you know, we'll be all right, but some, some added practice time um, to kind of and help us uh, kind of reinvent ourselves um, and to, to finish out the season strong here. Obviously, this is where depth, uh, in any kind of a sport where injuries, illness, uh, eligibility, whatever the case may be, that's where that depth is so important. Yeah, and you know we have you know we have a really uh, I, I think just a, a strong group of guys um, that you know all all capable. Um, it's more so just you know your, your roles are adjusting and kind of how you play a little bit um, is, is adjusting. So you know they don't you know I, I think we're just in a good spot to absorb that. But again, it you know practice time and and getting a few games under our belt trying to try to do things a little bit differently um, is, is kind of what's needed. You know, I was watching uh, some of Ohio State men's basketball coach talking in an interview yesterday, and he was talking about the shooting problems that they, they are having in, in certain parts of the ball game. And he said, you know, over the years, I've learned that yelling, uh, make the shot never helps the ball go in, but maybe we need to take a better percentage shot or make sure we're getting better look. And I guess in any kind of sport, certainly basketball with shooting, for example, that confidence is so important to that shooter. When he lets that thing go with good fundamental mechanics, that's all part of it, but you got to believe that thing's going to go through the hole too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we, we shoot a lot of practice every day. Um, and, you know, we, we got, you know, obviously everyone knows about Brody and how well he shoots it, but we have other guys who shoot it well and they do a good job of playing their role and not taking those bad shots. You know, they're, they're taking shots they can make. Um, and, and I know, you know, just stressing to them and everybody, Hey, let's, let's work for a great shot. And when we get it, you know, be ready for it and let it fly. Um, I, I see him shoot every day at practice and um, we have guys that have earned the right to take those shots and, um, and feel like they're going to go in. 
Your opponent, Zane Trace, who leads the league with a, a conference undefeated record, uh, but they've had some struggles themselves in the non-conference. Uh, they've lost uh, six games, and they've had some injury problems, too. I know they got uh, uh, one of the Gerald boys back, but uh, I think Carter Langley is still out for a few more weeks. So, you know, in a way, they're kind of dealing with some of the same issues that you have. But what have you seen in some of the scouting reports of the Pioneers that you, you feel like we got to do this or that to come out with a W? Um, you know, I, I mean, watching them, they're certainly, a, you know, I, I think a, a very fundament, fundamentally sound, um, you know, obviously very, very well coached team um, with, with good balance, you know, good, good players all over the floor. Um, I, the, the thing that we stress to our guys is, um, you know, we certainly, you know, we watch film on other teams and hey, some things they do, some ways, you know, we want to attack that and things like that. But the main thing for us is just to, to really keep a focus on, on what we do um, and making sure that we're playing our roles defensively where we're, we're supposed to be, um, regardless of, of what the other team is running and things like that. And then, you know, same thing offensively, trying to keep a focus on, you know, moving that ball side to side um, and, you know, when you have times where the ball sticks, making sure that off the ball we're not <clears throat> we're not standing and watching, um, and just trying to really keep that focus on us and us kind of kind of doing what we want to do, uh, regardless of of who we're playing on a nightly basis. Oh, we appreciate your being with us. I know you're crunched for time on a lunch break here. Uh, we look forward to seeing you Friday night against the Pioneers. All right. Yep. Thanks for having me. And Kyle Joseph, head coach of the Westfall Mustangs on our Litter Media pregame show. And again, we hope that uh, the weather will cooperate and be able to play this game Friday night. But if not, they're working on a uh, provisional date that they can go to. Yep. Alternative yep. date, so to speak. All right, coming up in a moment, our player of the week. We will announce who that is. And uh, also coming up on Sunday, the announcement of our Litter Media Neil Coleman Insurance, Wyandotte Mutual, Player of the Year for 2023. And um, it'll be easy to talk about because we've been thinking about this for mm -hmm. several weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've known, but we've been waiting for the trophy to get made <laughs> and all that. And it's finally all coming together this weekend. So be watching for a special edition here Sunday, uh, probably around 1.30 in the afternoon this coming Sunday for the announcement of our Player of the Year. But our Player of the Week, that announcement is coming up. And we'll also hear from Ty Park from Neil Coleman Insurance, who explains why they wanted to jump on board with this particular award. Details coming up next on the Litter Media Game of the Week preview show. This is Andy Tomlinson. When insuring what's important to you, our agents are there when you need us the most. Tomlinson Insurance, for the best coverage at the best cost. Visit us online at tomlinsonins.com to learn more. Find a career you love with Pickaway Ross Adult Education. Skilled trades careers are in high demand with no signs of slowing down. Pickaway Ross offers career training programs with expert instructors and hands-on learning tactics to create a variety of opportunities. Visit our website for more information. worth it if you enjoy it. Nickelode Ultra. Each week, Litter Media presents the Neil Coleman Insurance Wyandotte Mutual Player of the Week. If you have an athlete to nominate, any amateur athlete is eligible. Simply visit littermedia.com and click on Player of the Week. At the end of the year, we'll announce the Player of the Year. Make your nominations now at littermedia.com. Click on Player of the Week. And we're going to do that right now. And if you click on our website, I think it's active. And you yeah. will find out that uh, this week's Player of the Week is Evan Sipril, a Chillicothe High School graduate. And uh, he most recently, of course, has been in the water down at Shawnee State, not talking about the river. <laughs> yeah. He, he might have been swimming in the river. I don't know. But um, they Tough swim. Tough training program. <laughs> <laughs> they swim at the uh, Warsaw uh, Aquatic Center, which you can see 
the is it the Grant Bridge, the one that's got yes. the really cool yes. uh, shape to it, uh-huh. uh, right outside the window from that uh, aquatic center. Uh, they will be swimming, speaking of Shawnee State, uh, this coming Saturday against Midway, Kentucky, and West Virginia Tech. And um, last year, the Shawnee State men finished 20th in the NAIA Nationals, and Evan was part of that. And uh, Evan, this past um, Saturday, Picked up a win in the men's 200-meter fly. Uh, He finished second in the men's 400-meter medley relay, also second in the 200-meter free relay, and the men's 50-meter relay, or forgive me, men's 50-meter free, he placed fourth. So still busy. I I remember him as a YMCA Marlin. Yeah. And so um, it's been a great career for him. Congratulations, and we wish him well. Uh, against uh, the folks they're swimming against this coming Saturday. Yeah. All right. In the meantime, let's hear from Ty Park from Neil Coleman Insurance. We had a chance to sit down with him yesterday to talk about their involvement with our Player of the Year and Player of the Week award. Well, now you know who the... <clears throat> excuse me. <coughs> Cut that part out. <laughs> Well, now you know who this week's Player of the Week is for the Wyandotte Mutual Neil Coleman Insurance Player of the Week and representing those entities. We have Ty Park with us. Good to have you here. Good to be here. Thank you so much for for allowing me to to come and be a part of this. We wanted to have you on to talk about your participation in the award. And of course, use this as a teaser because this weekend we're going to release the Player of the Year Award. And I know I reached out to you uh, during the summertime about joining our team, being a part of this, and supporting this award. What sold you on that? It wasn't me. (laughs) Right. No, it it is not a difficult sell for for us uh, in our agency. You know, we love what sports and athletes and what they they mean, the athletics. um, We are very close to... Uh, many of our schools in the area, um, we value the lessons that can be learned in, in athletics, but we mostly we, we value the community aspect. If you think of the history of, of sporting events and what they used to mean and what they are now, there's still so much community gathering. Um, you know, where else can you go and, and run into uh, former high school classmates or uh, people that were in the stands when you were a player um, and have these detailed conversations about the glory days and, and just uh, reminiscing, but also watching the current talent and effort and the coaches and all the, all the things that the kids are going through. It's to, to us, it's a, it's a no brainer to um, team up with organizations that want to celebrate the positive. You know, we, we have so many things in our society today, especially more so now it feels like than just a couple years ago that are negative, um, that highlight the negative, that constantly uh, thrive on the negative. Um, We want to team up with positive aspects, celebration, you know, um, let's, let's highlight how hard these kids are working. Let's, let's be a part of um, a team or a school district that uh, really is wanting to celebrate uh, accomplishments of kids and and this is just one area that we get to do this you know we we look for those opportunities so we we are very thankful to be a part of this so uh, this week we are featuring the uh, our litter media game of the week zane trace at westfall you of course are a zane trace alum i am neil coleman is a westfall alum right and of course your your wife was an athlete a hall of famer at chillicothe high school she, yes she and puts me to shame. university <laughs> and, and everything else there but um athletics has been it, it was the foundation with neil starting yes. when he was a young kid in pickaway county yes and and neil still very very active and wanting to know what you know, what this team's doing, what that team's doing. Uh, he, goes to, he goes to many games. Um, you know, lately, of course, we, we travel quite a bit to, to see our kids play. Uh, um, you know, being, being so much uh, a, a part of our school districts, um, still connecting with, you know, Zane Trace folks. Um, you know, obviously, m- my kids uh, attend Unioto. We live in Unioto School District. Uh, and, and that rivalry is still a, a very real thing <laughs> it is. Uh, for both sides. And, of course, I, I love people at Zane Trace. I love people at Uniota. Um, 
but I still love the rivalry. I still love watching the competition. Um, one thing that, that Neil has always celebrated uh, is when you see good coaching, when you see good athletes, you can enjoy that. You know, yes, you you have your you know, deep seated you know rivalries at times, uh, but that that's part of what makes the event fun, and it makes it such a nice gathering spot um, for the community. Uh, it's just something that uh, we we talk talk about quite a bit. It, yeah. It's it's great uh, celebrating the the good things going on in the community, and we we know that insurance is usually there when something bad has yes. happened. Yes. Uh, you have to have that insurance. And so even when there are tragedies, there's still some triumph. Right. So an opportunity to celebrate both. Absolutely. Um, you know, our goal is to offer solutions and products to be there um, to help put people back um, in the event that the, you know, the, the, the terrible happens. Um, whether it's, home, auto, life, business insurance. Uh, we, we have solutions and we have companies that we really uh, value um, for, for those that we uh, can service. And uh, we believe that, that our agents, the, the folks that in our offices are, are, are outstanding at not pretending to have all the answers, but to uh, work hard, to find solutions, to ask the right questions. Uh, sometimes we're, we're we're so thorough uh, that it, it it's a, a lot of time to get a solution in place. But our goal is always to take the individual and tailor uh, products for that individual. Uh, but it, it it is a team environment. It takes all of us in our agency to to make it happen. Um, so when it comes to the aspects that we've learned from our sporting careers, um, you know we we apply it. We see. Uh, the ups and downs, uh, the working hard, the learning, changing, modifying, learning from your mistakes, all of those things that we see these young athletes do and that we celebrate, um, each of us in our agency, we talk about those glory days, but we, we talk about how that has helped shape our pattern of getting better. We, we constantly want to get better, just like our local teams do. Right. Um, so it's kind of a no brainer for us to be involved in this. Mm -hmm. so. Now, if you want to find out more about Neil Coleman insurance, uh, of course you've got a website, you've got uh, all on Facebook, Twitter and sure. everything. But if you click on where it says players of the week on our website, littermedia.com, that'll take you to the page where you can see who the players of the week have been. And you also have a link there that goes right to your website. That's great. All right. Fantastic. Absolutely. So thank you. Appreciate the opportunity. <laughs> thank you for your support in this award. And yes, uh, again, be watching this weekend. We will have the player of the year introduced to everyone this weekend here on Litter Media. Ty Park, Neil Coleman Insurance, Wyandotte Mutual. Thanks for watching. Coming up, we'll continue with our program here with the Litter Media Game of the Week preview show. Kingston National Bank was founded in 1909 by local businessmen. The concept of a local bank supporting our community's financial needs with local decisions made sense. This is Phil Evans, President and CEO of Kingston National Bank. I invite you to make KNB your bank. We continue to make local decisions that benefit our communities. Experience innovative products and excellent customer service. When you need us most, you can count on KNB. Our community, your bank. Kingston National Bank, member FDIC, equal opportunity lender. Whenever I first applied for the Archways opportunity, oh, do I have to pay this back? Do I have to do that? Like, is it a loan? And it's not, it's a scholarship. A goal of mine is to graduate college debt free. If you're a crew member, you get 2,500 a year. And if you're a manager, you get 3,000. And especially if you're going locally to college, like to the branch or something like that, it's really helpful. At Rathcamp Financial, we offer customized investment solutions and superior client service. We believe in long-term relationships and working to earn your continued trust. Our greatest satisfaction comes from working with clients for many years and helping them realize their dreams. Now that's one fast mower. 
Take command of your lawn with Dixie Chopper, the world's fastest lawnmower. You've been seeing games for this Friday night scrolling across the top of the screen. One of those is Paint Valley hosting Unioto between the junior varsity and varsity contests. Paint Valley will have their induction ceremony of this year's class. The 2023 class includes Travis Burton, who is a state champion in track and field. Uh, Dylan Swingle, who went on to play at uh, Bowling Green and also Duquesne University. And Tegan uh, played basketball. And Tegan McFadden, who uh, most recently has been at Mount Vernon Nazarene. And got one more year with one more year. So, uh, again, these, these guys are fantastic Bearcats and uh, are still fantastic Bearcats in their own right as well. Uh, Logan Elm will have their Hall of Fame induction this Saturday night. Uh, the class uh, that's going in includes uh, Brandon Amon, a basketball All-Ohioan, uh, Doug Stiverson. I don't think you need to say anything more than the name. Precisely. <laughs> Coach Doug, of course, uh, retired to uh, take care of his uh, uh, ailing mother, I believe it was. Uh, so uh, Doug will be going in. The 1993-94 girls basketball team that was a Final Four uh, club that year, they're being inducted into the Hall of Fame, and the award of merit is going out to uh, Bob Butts, who was a longtime uh, supporter of high school uh, athletics there at Logan Elm. Um, just one of those guys that would pitch in for everything. Mm -hmm. So those are those uh, people that are going to be inducted this Saturday. And that'll be at uh, McDowell. Mm -hmm. Not the new gymnasium, right. but McDowell because of the bigger crowd coming out. And if you have uh, information on your Hall of Fame oh. that perhaps the school is doing that this weekend or uh, in future days, because I know Chillicothe's will be on February 3rd, mm -hmm. um, send that information in to us if you could or have one of the representatives send it to us because we don't always have that showing up on our schedules. Mm -hmm. So uh, we depend on some folks to tell us what's going on. Yep. All right. Um, as we jump into the weekend again, weather may dictate what gets played and what does not get played. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that shakes out, as it were. Yeah, uh, just and this is not official. We were just talking with uh, Coach Kello. They'd like to play, obviously, right. but if it's not possible Friday, they're going to try to get it played Saturday. And it's there's a possibility that it could be an afternoon game Saturday if. Number one, they don't play Friday, and number two, if they get a play uh, on Saturday. Right. Uh, SVC girls' night is Saturday, but if the guys played on Saturday afternoon, they'd be done right before the evening games. And we'll be there either way. Yeah. So I'll have my um, yak, whatever that is, to <laughs> trench yak. through the snow. Your yak tracks. <laughs> my yak tracks. I yeah. learned something earlier today on <laughs> Morning show. Watch for Mike and the Eskimo, uh, yeah. and, and, and perhaps uh, <laughs> you may even have Tom Beard with one of the, the sleds and all the huskies Hush. out in front. <laughs> no, I'd be the one pulling him on the sled. Because <laughs> Mike carries this all. I carried it all. Yeah. All right, uh, that's it for the program today. Uh, again, Westfall High School in the Dome. The St. Trace Pioneers and the Westfall Mustangs are Litter Media Game of the Week. That's coming up Friday night or another time later. For Mike Smith, for Aaron Glandon, our ace producer, I'm Dan Ramey. Thanks for watching Litter Media and, of course, our Game of the Week preview show.